Good morning, it's Rachel from Central Texas Zone 8B and I'm at my own house in the backyard here. I have a few projects planned for today. I'm going to be um, just popping in a few uh, annuals as well as a couple perennials. Um, I have um, some planters up front that I are kind of like my tropical planters um, and I had a uh, Sansevieria in it, um, but then I decided to, there was a lot of winter damage because I didn't, um, we've been traveling a lot and I didn't have um, a chance to cover them and so they got um, some damage. They're kind of under protected eaves right up against the house so a lot of times I can leave them out all winter but they were, I, I just, it got a little too cold this time so, um, and I wasn't there to cover them. So when I came back, um, I took out um, the bits that were still alive and I put them together in a separate um, planter um, from the two. And I put in some other tropical plants in there for the start of this year. Um, and I just was looking at them the other day and I decided I wanted a few more to tuck a few more tropical plants in around the base of these larger plants. I think one of them is like a ponytail palm, uh, uh, palm or something. I'm not entirely sure. I'll have to go back and look. I always forget. <laughs> But anyhow, I was at the um, a couple plant stores this morning, and oh my gosh, plants have gotten so expensive. Like um, some of these things just seem to have doubled in price. So I grabbed a few things from the like damage sales racks, which is kind of I always check those over anyhow um, because a lot of times those plants are very salvageable. Um, but yeah, I ended up just having to spend a little more money than I wanted to for sure it was very expensive I don't know um, yeah inflation definitely is <laughs> affecting the plant stores for sure I mean it's affecting everything but anyhow um, I also wanted to give an update on the bulbs that I planted so I'll take y'all over to see that um, and then I wanted to pop some uh, milkweed in um, I have milkweed in my garden right now but it um, it had died back to the ground. It is starting to come back up from winter, um, but I just wanted there to be like at least one full plant for any butterflies that are coming through. And then I also wanted to pop in uh, the ground some dill because that's a host uh, plant to um, a swallowtail, I believe, and also is a host plant to a lot of, um, or attracts to the garden a lot of animals that are, not animals, bugs that prey on um, like aphids and things, I believe. Um, so there's a couple bugs that attracts that eat those guys which I want so I'm gonna um, pop that into my butterfly garden on the side um, I'll take y'all over for that too it's not in its full glory right now because it's you know just waking up from winter time um, but it is my favorite um, bit of my garden um, so I really love it's on the side of my house I really love it a lot it's just it's funny it's over by the AC unit so it's like why do you love this it's like there's an AC unit right in the middle of this like narrow garden pathway but I don't know I just it's my favorite garden spot <laughs> at my house um anyhow so I wanted to plant the milkweed and uh, the dill and um pot up uh, those tropical planters a little bit more so I'll take you along for that anyhow okay get started all right so here are the bulbs that I planted. Um, all the uh, lilies and the day lilies are coming up. Let's see which one was this. Did I put a title on this one? Oh, great. One I don't have a title on. Great. <laughs> I don't know how that happened. Oh, that was from before I did these up. This is another. Um, those are day lilies, I believe. Um, and I'd gotten them a long time ago. Or maybe not. I don't know what kind of lilies they are. Never mind. I don't know anything. <laughs> Um, so these all are coming up, the, um, all the lilies are coming up, the, except for the canna lilies. I am not getting any action on these so far, so I don't know how long those take to emerge, but so far there's nothing on those, and those are the bulbs that I was the most, um, kind of iffy on as far as, uh, they seemed a little spongy to me, um, when I got them out of the bag. So, and then here's my crinum lily. It is, there is like a little bit of green emerging here. So I'm hopeful that's going to do well. And then my elephant ears that I had planted, um, this, this is to prevent squirrels from digging in here. It, it only works so, so they, it's kind of the, the little, um, openings are a little too big. So they're able to sit through and dig in there. Anyhow, um, I, turns out, huh, um, 
I planted those upside down. <laughs> I don't know if you remember from the video, I wasn't sure which way they went in and turns out I picked the wrong way. So I flipped them over, but it was too late for one of them and it kind of had rotted. Um, the other two still seemed okay, so I'm gonna give it a go with those. If that doesn't, uh, they don't come up, I'm definitely going to plant, um, I have some, ooh, uh, uh, so I have some tubers coming in for dahlias. I might try them in here. It's the border mix off of Eden Brothers. There's also, um, what are they called? Okay, back. I remembered <laughs> what uh, the they're called. They're caladiums. I don't know why I just completely had a brain mishap there and couldn't, um, could not remember the word, even though I've planted caladiums plenty of times. To where I should be able to remember that. Anyhow, I got them from Classic Caladiums, which is where I've bought my Caladiums from in the past. They're supposed to have um, a lower percentage of the, or not have the that virus that Caladiums have that make them grow smaller every year. I don't know. Um, regardless, uh, I put in an order with them, and so that typically comes like around Mother's Day or just after Mother's Day, so I will plant this planter up with those and maybe some grasses or something, and then I'll probably, sorry if you see there's like pots and stuff around. I have little children. They throw things everywhere and it doesn't, they'll get into anything and make anything a toy, which is a wonderful thing, but it's also just means that there's going to be a messy yard most of the time. <laughs> so anyhow, um, I'll probably pop some of the caladiums over here as well as some of that border mix for the dahlias. And then um, I'm really sad. I've been away for a while and I came back and I lost a few plants, which is, you know, it happens, but, um, anyhow. Oh, and I wanted to show y'all I've got buds on my weeping crepe, uh, not crepe myrtle, what am I talking about? Weeping, weeping red bud. I'm really excited. This is its second year in the ground, and I love this tree. It's so beautiful. It's leaning a little bit. I need to stake it a little bit better, but I love this tree so much. It's so beautiful. Um, can't wait for it to be in full bloom and even when it's not in bloom and it's just the leaves this thing is just absolutely gorgeous I love it so much um anyhow I'll take y'all around to see where I'm going to plant the dill and stuff okay so this is my side garden I call it my butterfly garden and I just love this space it is winter time so a lot of things have been cut back um and are just starting to re-sprout um here's my native dogwood it's a rough leaf dogwood this um I love this little tree it does sucker quite a bunch at the base. I just cut those off. Um, and then all those little plants are just starting to wake back up. So it looks like just a bunch of sticks. And even this like looks like it's dead, but you can see green at the base here and over here. So that's waking back up and stuff. I mean, just like lots of little plants are just coming back to life. And I just added a few more little plants. Like I put a lavender in right here and a few other things. So there's a few new plantings. Um, I mostly keep this perennials over on this side, and I do a lot of natives here. But um, uh, this year I did add in a few, um, I don't know if you can see this, I added in a few annuals just because I like the plants. So I wanted a few little tropical ones. Um, this is my kind of little patch of, I cut them back so you can't really see them, my patch of the little uh, native chili pepper. Um, what is it called? I always forget. I don't remember. I'll try to put it down on the screen if I remember to do that. So I've cut back my milkweed too. I don't know if you can see. I cut it back and it's all coming back. There's some milkweed I, I grew from seed that is um, very tiny and kind of sad looking, but it's it's coming along. Um, and then there's some more milkweed coming back. Um, Yarrow is coming back too. That had kind of died down to the ground. Um, this is my little, my kid's little fairy garden. And when kids come to my, play at my house with my kids, they, ooh, the door fell over. Um, they get to paint a stone um, and leave it over here. So I like to do that with the kids. So this is my Amistad salvia. It's coming back from root and it looks beautiful. Um, I think this is shrubby bone set right here. Uh, and then I have a creeping, um, I think that's a basil. I'm not entirely sure. I don't remember. That's coming back too. And then my Texas star hibiscus is kind of hiding, hides these, uh, uh, boxes and stuff. Uh, that, I don't know if you can see, sorry, the lighting's not really great. That um, had died back completely to the ground with the great freeze of 2020 and then literally grew like 
up to the eaves up there in one one season like it was beautiful put on tons of bloom I cut it back really severely um, and I'm sorry I'm really bad with the cameras uh, I cut it back really severely I'm not sure if that was a smart move to make um, hibiscus are normally a little, take a little longer to wake up too so we'll see what it does but I mean it came back completely from root I thought it the poor little thing had completely died with the great freeze um, the snow apocalypse as people call it I always call it the great freeze for some reason but um, anyhow the snow apocalypse I thought it completely killed it and it it came back completely from roots so um, then I have a lot of little native plants over here and I just stuck these these are ones I grew from um, see the um, globe amaranth there and stuff so this is kind of there's a little bit of trash I need to clean up it's not trash it's it's pots and um, plant covers that I need to put away and haven't yet and then I have to put out these little bags of uh, gravel because I had some wash away that's the thing with crush the crushed granite it does wash um, yeah so you do have to kind of replace it every once in a while and then right here is Greg's mist flower this thing is a, a beast it comes back full force this is all seedlings um, and then the mother plant probably got frozen back and these are all those little seedlings that are popping up everywhere and then this little guy I don't know if y'all know what this is this is that kind of like it sticks to things plant I don't know it comes in from my neighbor's yard she doesn't mow her yard very often and it's just popping up everywhere so that's great it sticks to your clothing and it's kind of like I don't know we always call it like the velcro plant or sticky plant and then that poor little guy I kind of killed um it was super pot bound and I just wasn't here to water it as much as it wanted it particularly wanted to be living in water um, and I just didn't have the time to take care of it like it wanted to. Um, so I tried sticking it in the ground to see if it would help it. And it's, it's a, it doesn't look like it's, um, enjoying that. I just planted the plumbago and then this, um, this is gorgeous. I, this is a, um, sunrise rose agastache. How do you say that? I'm really bad at pronouncing things, obviously, if you watch my channel at all. You know that already. Um, but it's gorgeous. It's just like, it's got these like orange throats on the outside and they, they, they start out orange and then they open to this beautiful purpley pink and it's just really loving that plant. Um, and then this is my Belinda's Dream Climbing Rose. I had trimmed that back earlier this year and it's already leaked out a bunch. Um, and then I have a Thomas Graham climbing rose over here um, that has been kind of a slow grower, but this is his second year in the ground over here. Um, I had moved it too, so it kind of took a little bit longer to come back. Um, here's some more milkweed coming back after I'd cut it back. It's coming back really strong, so that's great. Um, so hopefully there's a lot of food for the butterflies here and then what was this i don't remember what this is this is shrubby bone set i believe or something i don't know some, it's some native, native plant fragrant mist flower maybe um some more fragrant mist flower over there that's coming back yeah but anyhow this is my kind of area i need to clean up over here so yeah this little tree is that native um what is it I always the orchid tree yeah and it's starting to um, send out little green shoots so hopefully this can bloom several times a year I believe um, but typically it's only bloomed once for me so far it's still pretty tiny though it hasn't done a lot of growing um, I did move this tree it used to be right over here where this um, Camellia was, but it was too shaded over there, so I moved it over there. Again, sorry about the mess. I was just shoved it over there before my travels and didn't have time to put it away, really. Um, this is that pot that I, you can tell that squirrels have been digging all in here. Anyhow, this is the pot. I cut the bottom out of it. If you follow me on Instagram, um, I cut the bottom out of this planter because I wanted it to be a pot, like a raised bed, basically, so the plants could put down roots into the soil and um, I wouldn't have to hopefully water it quite as much. We'll see if that works. This is a little patch right here of native um, salvias I have. It's um, both the coral nymph and the red so it's kind of a, a little clash of colors. I kind of wanted to see which one would do better here and so far the red is definitely like 
taken off and um, it kind of drowns the pink out and it blooms a lot more in this, this shaded area so blooms a lot more and um, for uh, just uh, grows a little taller I have to cut it back a couple times a year to keep it I like to keep it kind of low here just kind of popping up the so the red flowers just kind of pop up over these rocks right here and I want that to kind of take up this whole area right here eventually so we'll see how that goes but anyhow um, I'm gonna get planting and I'll just um, take y'all along with that for that I probably won't talk too much while I'm doing the planting um, but yeah I'll get started okay so I did have a milkweed back here it looks like it died completely to the ground and is not coming back um, because all my other milkweeds have re sprouted and this one is kind of not. I'm going to plant this other milkweed really close to where this one at, was at, just in case this one comes back. I doubt it, but um, I like having a milkweed back here because it's a lot of plant uh, um, larvae, or not larvae, sorry, um, words. If the caterpillars start eating it, um, it's less noticeable behind plants. Um, this is another plant. I'm not sure if it came back. Um, anyhow, all these other ones are like salvias and skullcap and stuff like that. I've cut them to the ground. And then over on this side, I have, what is it, the um, purple heart. Um, and then there's another variety of it called like cat ears or something. It's kind of like fuzzy, but it's that ground cover. Um, it dies back with some of uh, the frost a lot of the time, and then it, it's all re-sprouting. I'll show you here in just a second. And then this is just the mess that is my backyard right now. <laughs> Or kind of all the time. If I, I have little kids, okay, I just can't really keep a as clean of a backyard as I'd like. There's just stuff everywhere. And then I always find um, also that with winter time, I typically just get a it, things just get more cluttered in winter for me. Um, I think it's because I have all the seedlings I'm taking care of, and I just can't stay on top of keeping the rest of the garden neat and clean looking. Um, so that's just kind of what happens in my yard. <laughs> but this is reality I do, for me. Y'all can see my reality. I don't really care. This is just how my backyard looks right now. And that's fine. It will look beautiful later and I know that because that's what happens year. All right, so I'm just planting this directly in native soil. It's, um, I'm just going to tease out the bottom also a little bit. Um, I'll mix a little bit of that into the native soil and I'll just plant that up a little bit. I've got, I always try to keep a little, carry a little bucket around with me of the fertilizer with, you know, my tools in it and stuff. So just throw some of that in there. And there's, it's not super root bound or pot bound, so I'm not. And it's just been watered too at the store or that I got it from. I just got this this morning. Ran out to grab some milkweed. Okay. Let's kind of press that in. And that's that. I'm going to plant this front one here. <clears throat> I saw these. I didn't mean to get this, but so cute. It's called Blazing Embers um, Bidens. Anyhow, um, so just thought I'd stick that in here. Uh, let's see, I'll put it up here by the front. So I think these are skull caps over here. This is a salvia. I don't know if that one's going to come back. Someone, I, I've had several salvias that haven't done well coming back for me. Um, so maybe y'all can comment below and tell me which salvias do really well coming back for you. Amistad's done really well. I love Amistad. I, when I first fell in love with it, I went, I was at the Austin Botanical Garden and they had one there that was like, I don't know, it was like six feet tall or something like that. And I remember just, it was like the dead of summer. It was so freaking hot outside. And I just remember walking, walking past it and just being blown away by it. Ooh, a worm. Yay. Um, and thinking I have to have that in my garden. That was several years ago. Uh, 
probably like five years ago or something. I don't know. I don't know. Um, but I fell in love with it there and I've tried to keep it in my garden ever since. Okay, um, that's in the ground. I just kind of stick things in willy-nilly sometimes and that's fine with me. Um, I'm going to show you the other uh, plants that are kind of popping up over here. Okay, so you can see them kind of um, popping up all along here. Um, this is kind of where a bigger plant was. These I had bought um, from little cuttings off Etsy one year and um, they're probably just a few little cuttings and then I rooted them and then I planted them outside and they've this, in this area and they've just done really well every year. And then over here are the purple ones that are coming up. Uh, I can't remember the scientific name. Uh, anyhow, that over there is one of the salvias. I don't think it's come, that's not going to come back for me. I think it's Wendy's Wish or something. I'm not entirely sure, but it just doesn't seem to come back for me. Um, I've tried a couple years to plant it now. It never comes back from winter. Um, and these are the little bits that are coming up, so that'll kind of cover this whole, the purple one will cover this whole area here, and then the um, little fuzzy green one will cover this whole area here, and they bloom purple flowers. And there's all my kids' play toys. This right here is a um, coral honeysuckle. Um, there's a few plants planted right there, and then back on that other one has not leafed out yet is the um, golden showers ricanthus. Uh, probably saying that wrong. And then on the op the very far back is a um, American view berry. So. All right, so here I am in this little circle border bed, um, <clears throat> or not circle, the border bed I just had redone and I'm going to plant a few lamium. I thought these were crazy expensive though. <laughs> I feel like I've seen these in the past for like like two something and now here they are six dollars basically. It's crazy. Um, oh well. Also in the past, I past years I would go around to nurseries looking for lamium and could not get it at the nurseries. Nowhere. And they were always really surprised when I'd ask for it. Um, ooh, big fat worm. This bed always has big fat worms in it. I love it. Uh, you know what I also love is how I said I wasn't going to talk much during these plantings and then I literally am not shutting up. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm just going to stick some lamium in this bed. Um, I might just have this whole area be lamium. I don't know. We'll see. Um, I had, I thought this was funny. I don't know if you can see on the camera, but there's a few... Oh, let's turn this aside. There's a few yellow uh, um, pansies in there. I, I bought that as, as a flat, and uh, I guess someone had <laughs> stuck the wrong ones in there. So I have a few <laughs> odd yellow ones. I just leave them. I don't really care. It's all good. So here's one of these planters that I have that I'm planting up. Um, I just kind of had already laid out the plants around the base. Um, I do have a lot of problems with squirrels digging in these. So we'll see how this goes. Um, this one is planted a little lower in this pot than I like, but we'll just try our best here. Let's see. Pothos I'm not worried about because that'll, this stuff will grow to reach the light and it'll spill over. And I'm going to try some variegated liriope in here. I just kind of want a little pop of uh, variegation from this, uh, I don't remember what this plant is called. <laughs> I didn't leave a tag on it, so I don't know. It's some indoor plant. I got it out of the sale section during winter time because it had had some slight damage to it, which I'm totally fine with. So, yeah. And then this is some variegated vinca. I 
think I had this up here in this corner. I don't remember where I put the plants after I took them out. Memories. Where have you gone? <sighs> I think I used to have a good memory. I don't know. I had kids and then I <laughs> my memory got really, really bad. <laughs> okay, and then this is a... I'm not even going to try to pronounce that. It's a something, okay? I'll put it here. I don't know if you can see that. Okay. This was also on sale. Didn't really seem to have any damage that I could see, so yeah. And these are self-watering planters. I just got them off of Wayfair. So I think the vinco will come up over, we'll see. And then the Lariope, I just kind of want a little pop of like brighter um, color stuff kind of popping up here um, just to kind of add a little pop. And then this um, is a golden pothos. It's the, I would have preferred one with very, like more variegation on it, um, but um, they didn't have any for cheap. <laughs> so this is the one I just went with. I just grabbed whatever was the least expensive, which was still expensive because prices have gone up for this little tiny, hold on, ah, something dirt in my mouth. For this little tiny one, it was $5 for this, this little tiny pot. That's crazy to me. Maybe that's just me, but that seems crazy. <laughs> Croton, this is, yeah, a croton. I think these get bigger, I don't know. I don't, I don't, um, typically I just plant these out here with um, Sansevieria. So this is my first year trying some other things. I'm kind of excited about it, but I also just might kill them. We'll see. Um, but I think that'll get taller, and so there'll be kind of like a colorful pop back in this backhand corner. All right. Just sprinkle some... Uh, I don't use specialty fertilizer for these. I just use a slow-release thing. <laughs> so this is the same, a golden pothos here. I did vary the side up a little bit because I already have this pink foliage, so in the back I put green foliage instead of the, um, the croton. And this planter, the dirt is higher in here, so this stuff will definitely um, pop over quicker than on the other side. The variegated Lariope, still gonna pop really nicely against this dark foliage here. And again, this was one I got on sale from the winter damage and it doesn't look damaged at all to me. Like it has like a few little browned tips, freeze burned tips. And it was like half off already. So steel, this is the variegated um, Vinca. Do you like how I had to look at the tag? <laughs> Even though I just planted it on the other side. Can't remember anything. Okay, and I kind of planted the um, Lariope at an angle so that it spills forward a little bit instead of just sticking straight up. I'd rather it kind of come out a little bit more. Okay. So these were on sale because they have some little brown, um, <clears throat> brown tips. Let's see here. It's called Dracana. Drac I don't know. Mm -hmm. let's see. Ah, dirt everywhere. Okay. 
the roots out just a bit on this one. It's a little bit popping, not too bad. And I'm gonna tilt that again when planting. And then this one I'm also going to tilt a little bit too. And this one was a little more damaged, but I'll just put the damaged leaves to the back. Okay. Here's my sansevieria that I um, had uh, left outside in it, uh, during the freeze, um, several freezes actually, and uh, it forgot to cover. So I'm just going to take these scissors, sharp scissors, um, and kind of trim off the frozen bits here. So I kind of like to do it at an angle so it looks a little bit more natural. There's a few pieces in here that are um, waterlogged, so I'll just cut those off. Not really waterlogged, they're just uh, got water damage, so I'll just kind of cut those off. And then the ones that are just kind of freeze damaged further up, I just go back to the cleanest part of the plant and just kind of make a diagonal cut, and it still kind of looks decent in my mind then. So some of these are just far gone. But this is a very hardy plant, so I don't know if you can see this piece. I'm just going to cut it back to the greenery back here. It'll it'll bounce back. It is a slow grower, but honestly, um, I found the if I water it a little bit less, it grows a little bit faster. I don't know. That's just what I found. So I don't water this very often at all. And some of these I'm going to leave on here to see kind of what happens, but I think that's all I'm going to clean up for now. Um, and as the, the um, damage bits kind of age a little bit more and brown a little bit more, you can kind of trim it up a little bit so that they're not on there quite as bad. Let's see. I'm just going to turn this a little bit so that there's more pleasant side forward. And, like I said, I do expect this to bounce back pretty nicely. Step back. This is my sunscreen area for my kids just to come and grab them, spray them with sunscreen and bug spray and stuff. All right, let me show you. Okay, there we go. Pretty cleaned up, and it looks great. I think um, it'll fill in more, and I'm not particularly worried about it. I just, I don't mind if it looks a little... Um, a little bit jaggedy. Um, that's Marshall the Owl right over there. Our kids named it. Um, anyhow, I've got a few more plants to plant and I'll take you along for that. 